Story time about how I found my uncle sleeping with my best friend. So a little background information. I was 18 at the time and a freshman in college. My uncle was a National Guard and we were the same age, we went to the same school, and we also had the same friends. And while he was away, I had made one friend that he didn't know about. Her and I became best friends, we got into the same college, and we were in the same dorm room together. Well, the one day my uncle came to my college to surprise me. I ran up to him, I gave him a big hug, and my best friend was super confused because I had never introduced them. And when I introduced them, there was this weird awkward vibe. So all three of us went back to the dorm room, and I asked her if it was okay that he spent the night, because I didn't want to be that person to just invade her space. So she ended up saying yes, and eventually we all got really hungry, and we all wanted Chick-fil-A, so I went and I left them all alone in the room together. Like for part two. Part two about how I found my uncle sleeping with my best friend. So like I said, I went to go get his Chick-fil-A and I left them in the dorm all alone together. While I was waiting in line, I called them to ask what they wanted and nobody answered the phone. So I was like, okay, whatever, you know, it's fine. They're probably just busy talking. Talking. So I low-key took a long time because I went to the grocery store to get some cookies. I was just craving them. So then I get back to the dorm room. As soon as I open the door, I see both of them unclothed on top of each other on the bed. Doing the nasty. So for some reason, I had a broom and I threw it at my uncle and I went to my friend's apartment that night. And when I told my mom about it, she said that it was my fault because weirdly enough, they praised all the boys in my family. Story time about how my best friend started seeing my mom. So we're going to call my best friend Joey. Joey and I had been best friends since we were four years old and my family was really close with his and vice versa. And she had always been really nice to him. Of course, because he was a family friend and he was my best friend. Well, one day I thought that she liked him a little bit more than she liked me. She would always ask the weirdest questions. Like, oh, is Joey single? Or what's Joey's sexuality? Like, sis had a whole ass husband. But at the time, I didn't think anything of it because I just thought that she really wanted him and I to date. But when he turned 15, things started getting a little bit weirder. Like sometimes he would go over my house right after school, even when I wasn't there to hang out with my mother. And usually the only time he was at the house was whenever him and I were hanging out. Well, the one day I walked in and they were both sitting on the couch talking. And when they both saw me, they acted like nothing was wrong with it. Like for part, part two about how my best friend started seeing my mom. So like I said, the one day I come home after school and they're both sitting on the couch already talking and they look at me and say hi as if nothing was wrong with the situation. And then after that, Joey started mentioning how my mom was so hot. And I was like, yeah, no, she's pretty, but that's it. Well, the one day my mom left for work earlier than she usually does. So I messaged my dad and asked him if he wanted to hang out. So of course he said yes. And five hours later, I came home and I go upstairs. And I'm just like hearing things from my mother's bedroom. So I go up and I open the door. And because I don't want this video to get taken down, you guys probably can guess what I saw. So I ran out of the room, ran downstairs. I start panicking. And Joey came and hugged me and said, I'm sorry, me and your mom just love each other. So I told them both they were absolutely disgusting. So then my mom starts crying and begging me to forgive her. And now I live with my dad. Story time about the worst day of my life. So a little background information. I was 16 at the time, and I was either in 8th grade or 9th grade, but I really don't remember. And I have this boyfriend who we are going to call Cameron. We had been dating for three years, but before him and I got together, we were best friends. Well, I also was in a friend group with myself, Amber, and this girl named Skye. Now, I wouldn't really call Skye a pick-me girl. She was more of a jealous best friend. For example, the one day we went shopping for dresses, and I picked this one out that I really liked and that looked super good on me. Amber was like, OMG, you look so beautiful. And then Sky, she was like, that dress is ugly and it makes you look fat. Well, after that, I told her I didn't care what she said and that I was going to get the dress anyways. Well, she didn't like the fact that I wasn't going to listen to her, so she didn't talk to me for two whole weeks. And then after, she texted me saying that she forgives me, even though I didn't apologize, but okay. Well then, me being stupid, I introduced her to my boyfriend. Bad idea, like for part two. Part two about the worst day of my life. So like I said, me being stupid, I introduced her to my boyfriend. Well, after that, Cameron started acting really weird. 
Like him and I, we would literally hang out with each other 24 seven. And now he was always too busy for me and we would only talk at school. And because I was in all the smart classes and stuff, I would go over to his house to tutor him because you know, I was like the one who was winning every single fucking award for being smart. Well, I came over on the day that I would usually tutor him. And when I went over there, his mom was like, oh, he's busy, he's out with his friends. So then I went home and I got bored and I opened Instagram. Well, I see that he's at a party with Sky, and they didn't even invite me. So I asked him about it, and he said, oh, it was her and her boyfriend's party. So I was like, that wasn't really an excuse for why you didn't invite me. So he apologized, and I forgave him. Well, five weeks later, I found out that him and her did the nasty, and she got pregnant. And then there was a rumor going around that they made out in the bathroom. So I blocked both of them and never saw them again. Story time about how my husband accidentally told me that he was cheating on me. So just some background information. My husband and I got engaged two years ago. And this whole situation happened a month after we got married. So fast forward, it's a Sunday morning. Well, usually every week on Sunday, I clean the whole house. So I woke up, went into the bathroom to take my ring off, and I could not get it off. Mind you, I had gained a little bit of weight since my husband and I got engaged. Anyways... I tried butter, I tried soap, I tried everything, even oil. So after trying to get it off for an hour straight, my finger was three times bigger than it usually is. So at this point, I'm really scared that I'm going to have to get it cut off. Because one, I didn't want to ruin it. And two, it was really expensive. So I call my husband and he's like, oh, call your dad. Firefighters always know what to do. So I called my dad and thank God he lived five minutes away because he drove over really quickly. Like for part two. Part two of how my husband accidentally told me that he was cheating on me. So like I said, my dad lived five minutes away, so he just rushed over to my house. And we tried a few more things to get it off. We tried Windex, we tried the dental floss, none of it was working. So my dad told me that we were going to have to cut it off with pliers. So he comes over with the pliers, cuts the ring off. Well, a few days later, I had taken it to the same place that we got it to get the band fixed. Or replaced. While I was there, I decided to get it appraised. Just for insurance reasons. So a few days later, I go and pick up my ring, and when I get home, I look at the appraisal. It was not the same one that I had picked out in the store. It looked exactly like it, but there was like a $20,000 price difference. So right now, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm not mad about the money part. I'm more mad that my husband lied to me. I was more upset about the fact that he had lied to me. So I had made dinner reservations for the next night, so that way I could hopefully bring up the conversation about it, like for part three. Part three of how my husband accidentally told me that he was cheating on me. So like I said, I had made reservations for him and I to go out to dinner so that way I could hopefully spark up the conversation about it. So when we finally sat down, I had started up the conversation. I had told him that when I took my ring in to get it fixed, I also got it appraised. And his face immediately changed after that, but he wasn't saying anything. He was like, oh, okay, how did that go? So at this point, I was tired of beating around the bush, and I was like, why wouldn't you just tell me if we were having money troubles? And he was like, what do you mean? We're not having any money troubles. I'm fine. One thing about my husband is that he is very wealthy, and he takes pride in the fact that he is very wealthy. So obviously, me right there kind of questioning his wealth, he fucked up and told me the truth. He was like, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I accidentally gave the ring that I was supposed to give you to a girl I was seeing at the time, and I just never got around to replacing yours. So fast forward to present day, I am currently moving all of my stuff out of our house and filing for divorce. Story time about why my mom kicked me out when I was 16. So a little background information. This had all started as soon as my dad left my mom and I. I was like 13 around the time. Well, ever since then, my mom would have different guys in and out of the house all the time. Like we were lucky if a month went by and she was still with the same dude. Which I mean, I kind of get it because my dad did leave us for a woman that he had started another family with. But at the same time, it was just a whole mess. Anyway, so she had got with this new guy, and we're gonna call him Tyler. And by the way, the dudes that she would date, they would literally live at our house. Anyway, so a week after he moved in, I started getting really close to him, which usually never happens. Usually, I would try to keep my distance because I knew how wrong it was of her having all these different guys in the house when I'm only 16. Anyways... Every time that my mom would go to work, he would invite me to go see a movie and he would just be really flirty with me. And he was only six years older than me. And my mom was 32. You do the math anyways, life for part two. Part two about why my mom kicked me out when I was 16. So like I said, the guy was being super flirty with me, inviting me to the movies when my mom wasn't home and all that stuff. Well, then it led to more than just that. 
By the way, this guy did not have a job, so he was home with me 24-7. And I was doing online school. So we were in the house by ourselves 12 hours a day, 5 days a week. Anyways, like I said, it led to more and we started doing the nasty and stuff. Ew, just, yeah. Well, the one day after we got done doing the nasty in my mom's room, we had fell asleep. And yes, we did not have clothes on. Well, at 2 in the morning, I hear someone pounding on the bedroom door. And my mom worked night shifts. So we get up, he hurries up and gets dressed and tells me to hide under the bed. And he opens the door and it's my mom's sister. My sister literally lived in the apartment next door. And she was like, oh yeah, neither of you were answering the phone. So she wanted me to check on you guys. Like, where's Elena? And I'm still under the bed naked, like for part three. Part three about when my mom kicked me out when I was 16. So like I said, I'm laying under the bed, no clothes on. She asks where I am. And he's like, oh, she should be in her room. So he goes looking for me everywhere with her and he's like oh well maybe she's outside on the patio and i don't know why the hell my mom's sister had a key to our apartment anyways but she's still looking for me in the apartment and she looks under the fucking bed and at first she's like oh my god what did he do to you and i'm trying to tell her nothing like i made that decision on my own so she calls my mom right away my mom comes home she's screaming at me and she kicks me out so i go to my grandma's house and i told my grandma what happened and my grandma calls her and she's like, it's not her fault that you gave her daddy issues. And I'm like, bruh, what the fuck? Child, anyways. So then she goes on Facebook and starts posting about how I'm a whore and a slut and how like it isn't her boyfriend's fault at all. So now I 